Floyd. And um, you're in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. How, how close is that from Minnesota? Is that far or what? Um, it's roughly about eight hours out of Chicago. Okay. Um, we're all in the same area, you know, Midwest. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're fairly close to that. So what do you, I mean, we're saying that obviously everybody can't help but say it. If you got social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, no matter what, we're seeing this feed. We're seeing, you know, these four police officers and this one police officer in general with his knee on the back of uh, George Floyd's neck until he dies in front of the world. And um, what, what do you what are we to do now as black people for one in the situation? And how does municipal bonds tie into this whole situation? Well, you know, the, the one thing, the one thing is you don't want to act as, as we have been in the past. And, and it's been unfortunate with a lot of the things that's been going on um, with police brutality, particularly um, when it comes to white supremacy, racism, uh, something that all of us people of color, we have to address. And, I, you know, the way to react is at the root of what this problem is. And the root of this problem is funding and financing. That's the word of this problem. And a lot of times, and you know, I'm a financial advisor and I deal in the financial sector. And a lot of people take this for granted every single day. And we're, and we're actually today, today we were officially, um, Congress are officially stated we are in a, a depression. Mm. Uh, unemployment rate has shot through the roof, the highest in history. <clears throat> so as of May 28th, we are in a depression outside of initially being in a, in a, in a recession. And in, in something like this, people are anxious. They don't want to spend dollars. They're holding their money because they don't know where the next dollar is going to come from. The dollar, meanwhile, is constantly being printed and added to the debt ceiling, which causes the hyperinflation of the dollar. Now, with this being said, it creates anxiety amongst us, amongst us socially. And what happened to George Floyd was very unfortunate but it was predicated and it was it was already a given loss. One thing about these local governments is they follow the lead of our present government, and that is collateral damage. They already take every fiscal year how many, literally, how many people they're going to jail and how many people they're going to lose. And mm -hmm. the reason they do that is because of municipal bonds. Now, you know, and, the, and a lot of people don't really know or, or even heard of the term municipal bonds. Okay. And, if you're an investing person, if you're an investor and you're a high powered investor, that means you have money to work with, let's say $30,000 or more to invest. Generally, in this tier, it's about 100 grand. And it's, it's to preserve capital while generating a tax free income stream. So, municipal, municipal bonds are worth considering because municipal bonds are what we call munis in the financial world. They are debt obligations issued by government entities. So when you buy a municipal bond, you are loaning money to the issuer in exchange for a set number of interest payments over a predetermined period. Okay. So at the end of that period, the bond reaches its maturity. And when it does, the, the full amount of your original investment is returned to, to you. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Right. At the end of the day, what does that mean? If I'm wealthy, and let's say I live in Chicago, New York, Texas, L.A., Florida, like Miami, these major cities. Let's say I live there, and I want to invest in the municipalities. Well, municipalities include public works. They include parks. They include schools. Well, in the public works system, we have fire departments, and guess what else we do? We have police departments. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm investing in a municipal bond, that means that I'm building I am an investor. I sit on a board. I'm a shareholder in the production of that police department. That means that the chief of police, the building the chief sits in, the administrative staff, the training staff, the police officers themselves, they belong to me. I'm a shareholder. Regardless of what the mayor says, the mayor answers to me because I'm a shareholder. Mm. All right. So the mayor is the CEO and then I'm part of the board. Okay. So now my thing is I've invested 500,000, a million, 10 million even, usually that's how high it goes, into a city I know that can pay me back. What that does, that gives me influence on a rate of return. This is why different states have a living wage um, level. Each state lives at a different wage. Mm -hmm. 
That being the case, now I want you guys to look at this because a lot of people are not, this is why they're not talking about it. If I have influence, the number one thing is if I'm investing in public works, when it comes to policing, I'm going to invest in jails. Jails are private companies. Jails are not public works. They're private owned companies that either lease public buildings or buy the real estate and build a building on it. But it is a private entity. How do we fill jails? We fill jails with people, people that get serial numbers. These people are tax write offs. Each, each tax write off that is housed under Warehousing Act of the UCC, Article 9, they become um, warehousing aspects of appreciation. And this is why these inmates get this number. Well, these inmates have been invested in. They, they create a rate of return because this jail is going to get so much money per return. Now, in saying this, that municipal bond creates a motive. I'm an investor. I'm a shareholder. I have a jailing system already in place. My goal is to fill that jail. If I've invested in the public works, what influence am I going to have if I happen to own the jail too? I'm going to go to the mayor and the mayor's going to know because I'm a principal investor, we need to fill this jail. And this is why police officers have quotas. Well, we got to fill that jail. And we got to keep that ledger full. This is why the courthouses are full. This is why we get pulled over for silly stuff. This is why we're quick to be arrested and apprehended. Because that transcends into money, municipal dollars. And municipal bonds push the motive in the way that our officers act. It's not as simple as racial lines. There's racism there. We understand that. But it's not as cut and dry as these white people that are cops are attacking black people. It's not that simple. This has everything to do with political and financial status. And the, the terrible part about it, guys, is this can be prevented, but it won't be because of money, because of the fact that a quota has to be made to private investors. And this is what municipal bonds represent. They represent the motive as to why officers make hasty decisions, why officers are not trained, why their information is never made public, why they don't get quarterly drug screening and quarterly psychologically psychological evaluations, how come their badge number is not public along with the vehicle. The vehicle has a serial number, has a unit number. That vehicle should be with those policemen for the tenure of when they're working. Those police officers that work in those neighborhoods, how come they're not from the neighborhood? Hmm. Because they should be held accountable to protect the neighborhood on and off duty. Because that neighborhood they're sowing into. So tax dollars are constantly being poured out of neighborhoods because these are nothing but investments. These are nothing but private investments. And it's, it's a cycle to promote this kind of irrational behavior, because obviously, unfortunately, I looked at that that clipping with, with uh, Mr. Floyd. I couldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. All of you guys, I, I couldn't do it. No, I couldn't either. Personally. Um, it's no way you could tell me that the, that officer was saying of his right mind. It's no way. And he's carrying a badge and a gun. So that means that 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 damage control was not put in place. And this is what's so dangerous. And so careless when we talk about this system. And this is why municipal bonds are the motivation for a lot of the of the the, the broken justice system in these municipalities, large and small cities. So how does Freddie Gray, you know what I mean, Sam Du Bois, Philando Castillo, George Lloyd, how does municipal bonds take their life justifiably? Okay, indirectly. Indirectly, it takes their lives because Indirect. bills have to be filled. When you when you mix an officer who is supposed to be an officer of the law, and that law is supposed to be subjective to trial, when you, when the officer is put in the position to be judge and executioner, carrying a gun and a pistol, these this is the situation you're going to get. You're going to get those those, those situations with Fernando Castile and all those people like that because the incentive is not justice. The incentive is a bottom line. It's a, it, 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 it either it's going to yield an investment or it's not. And when that happens, the justice the justice system breaks, and you're going to have a lapse in what is supposed to be a justice system. 
because underneath that, the motivation is I'm an investor. I need a rate of return. This is my ROI. I need an ROR. This is the term that you gave me. This is the interest that you're, that is an interest bearing investment. I want my rate of return. Because when you see the, the, the infrastructure of these municipalities, remember, they're not state, they're not um, federally funded. These are local funded municipalities. All municipal, municipal investments are tax free. So the, it's, an, it's an incentive for people to pour money into that city that have the money to do it. Once that money is circulating within that city, it's tax free. You don't have to count it as income. So if I'm wealthy, I'm going to dump my money into a municipal bond so as I'm not accountable to, for reportable income. And that's what makes it attractive to do that. And so when you're doing that, that's what's going to determine what's justified and what is. Because when we look across the nation, arrest rates are very inconsistent. The law is always ambiguous when it's being enforced. It's never, it's never uniform across the entire country. What you do in Texas, you do the same thing in California. It can be two different outcomes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and depending upon the officer and their understanding and objective understanding of the law and their ability to enforce it at that moment. You understand? What, and so the, the inconsistency is absolutely ridiculous. It's just like the young lady, uh, uh, forgive me for not being able to, I think her first name is Brianna. She was just murdered by a police officer that shot her eight times and they shot into a house 20 times when they, when they kicked the door down in plain clothes. Right. That is absolutely violating procedure or warrant because you have to announce who you are or the person in the house has a right to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, gets, it gets blurred and they say, well, we're going to investigate the issue. Well, it's a woman lying dead. So we know that murder was committed. Regardless, why is that officer detained until the investigation is done? The same issue with Aubrey. The same situation with Aubrey. They're saying that these laws allowed it. They're giving, they're talking ambiguous laws, but they're not talking the fact that the municipal bonds support and fund the municipalities that make these ambiguous laws. Mm. They give the ambiguity to do whatever you want to do because right. the shareholders have determined that they want a rate of return and they and they're having a tax break in the money that they invest. So when you have these high profile people, and I'm talking about people that are notable. I'm talking about the, the big time celebrities and the big time business owners. They invest in municipal bonds. It's mm -hmm. called hedging. <laughs> so if I can put my money in a tax free vehicle at a higher rate, my income rate goes down. And so does my tax rate. It goes down. Now, when I start creating whole holding companies and subsidiaries, now I'm not attached to any of that income. So now my, my income becomes privatized. And that's exactly what's happening. This is why they can't just lock an officer up when he murders someone. Because of due process, what they call due process. Because these municipal bonds have a means of protecting a civil officer. Because the municipal bond itself is how the laws are written. They're written based on the rate of investment by private shareholders who dictate the ebb and flow of why they need that municipal bond to go by or pass. And if I and, and I guarantee you, if I'm an investor and I own a jail, I need my jail filled to capacity. And I need a waiting list to keep it filled. This is why people with child support are in jail. People that run to stop signs and it's a third striker in jail. People that have financial crimes are in jail. That shouldn't be. And the jail and the jail system is broken. This is why we have a disproportionate amount of black people considering black men in jail. Because they're in areas that promote anxiety, low housing, food deserts, and no employment. Mm. And when you see that, you see that municipal bonds support that because it funds these, these municipalities in a way that they run. You tell me a police officer put his knees on the neck of a man who was already handcuffed, right. did not defend himself, and the chief is in fire. And the mayor and the governor is calling for everything to be fired and still nothing. Nothing. Because the shareholders are blocking that. How can the governor say we need to fire this guy? And it's a no. You're telling the governor no? Mm. You're telling the mayor no? 
Yeah. It's the municipal bonds that block that because there are people that are influencers that are saying, no, that's my guy that's sitting in that police station and he's going to stay there. That's the guy that I put there. And this is what I've invested in your city. And that holds more jurisdiction than the actual people that live in the city. And that is collateral damage. And that's what's dangerous. And we have to start understanding that. So when we protest, we need to protest. OK, I need these. I need the municipal bonds. I need the SEC information on this municipal bond. I need to know who sits on the platform that supported this bond. I need to know the the politicians who voted for this. This funding. I need to know who was trying to get a tax break for this funding. What corporation that's more than likely a holding company or a subsidiary that invested into this municipal bond? Because this municipal bond is is funding these public works. And Minnesota has a long track record of police brutality. Hmm. This is just the one that happened to be to be publicized. But Minnesota has had a long tenure of police brutality. It's one of the highest cities of police brutality in the country. Wow. So explain to me how that's not a coincidence. Chicago, the same way. New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, the same way. Mm-hmm. Any of us from these cities know, go to court in Philadelphia and see what happens to you. Mm-hmm. And you're black. You're a black man. Have two strikes and go to go to district court in Philadelphia and watch how much time. Oh, yeah. So they, they, and it's consistent in cities where black males are, are per capita outnumbering everyone else in a concentrated area. So you take policemen that don't even live in the area that mm-hmm. are not accountable for their conduct, practicing misconduct on unbeknownst people, knowing, not knowing that their agenda is they're being paid to be misconductful. They're being paid, I need to lock up 10 people today or I can't feed my dog. This is an.